Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. Uh, this is episode 304, Projecting Confidence, recorded on Friday, May 24th. Uh, I'm Tyler Colt. And I'm Greg Belknap, and let's get right on into the show. All right. So Greg joining us here as a special guest for the week. Uh, Brett is on a road trip, which will terminate in Austin, Texas for Zoholics in just a couple weeks. So yeah, thanks, Greg, for filling in. Always good to have your special brand of unhinged uh, plugged of in here for the CRM show. Yeah. And I'm excited for uh, you, you mentioned Zoholics uh, coming up soon. Uh, Brett and I uh, are going to be doing a live CRM Zen show from there. Uh, nice. In two weeks, two weeks. Yeah, that'll be so, awesome. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing everybody there for uh, the first Zoholics in a couple years, and the first one I've ever been to. I've never been first to one a Zoholics. I've never been to the same. Yeah, because yeah, I really went full in in 2019 or 2018, and then in 2020, uh, COVID, and so they were all canceled. And then last year, they just did like the mini ones and like partners were kind of like not invited. And then we were and yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, we are looking forward to actually getting some face to face time for the first time uh, at Azoholics. So without any further ado, let us jump right on into the news. This episode of the CRM Zen Show is brought to you by Z Portals. Z Portals is a must have extension allowing you to effortlessly coordinate with clients and partners. We configure Z Portals all the time for our clients who are looking for the best portal solution. And boy, do we love how easy it is to customize and the flexibility to connect to multiple Zoho apps. So don't wait. Check out Z Portals today and be sure to mention Zenata to get 10% off your first month. All right, so into the news week here. First story comes from the Zoho One community. We don't actually see a lot of news from the Zoho One space. Um, A lot of times all the specific apps. So this (laughs) is just an update to a changes in the reset password flow. So essentially what this is, is that uh, previously a Zoho One admin could reset the password of any other user uh, that is in their domain, regardless of whether the master email domain was verified. Mm -hmm. What they're changing here now is basically that a Zoho One admin can only reset a password now for a user that's part of a domain that is verified in the system. Um, So just a minor change here around how those password resets can occur. One important thing is that a user can always make a password uh, reset request of their own, right? So it's not changing how a user would do this. This is really just at an admin level. This is an interesting one. Um, I do have a bit of a concern that like not everybody always wants to verify their domain, right? It's kind of a whole process and step that not everybody does. So I don't know if this is going to throw a wrench in for some admins that don't really want to take that step. Um, But again, users can always reset it on their own. Yeah, well, and their main concern over this is like they they mentioned that um, it's uh, more about like that they can't. Uh, an admin won't be able to reset the password of somebody else in the organization that that is of a different dom- a different domain or an unverified domain for your Zoho One instance, because uh, in your Zoho One you can add you know external users, you know contractor, accountant, uh, partner, something like that, and so they don't have the same domain as you, and previously just the super admin could just start resetting all the passwords for all of these external uh, accounts. Uh, and so that was bringing up some con- security concerns on, on Zoho's end. Yep. And that makes sense, especially because an external user might be engaging with multiple different accounts. Right. And so uh-huh. like one admin and one of them shouldn't just be able to reset their password. Um, yeah. I think it will just make it a little bit more important. Like you probably have a decent amount of people that don't have any external contractors, but just haven't went ahead and verified the domain because it like hasn't really mattered. Right. So mm-hmm. they've like not bothered looping in the IT team to like put the MX records or do whatever you need to do on the domain side. So just probably a step here that you're going to want to take. Um, again, users can always do this for themselves, but if you find yourself resetting users' passwords, just be sure to get that domain verified so that you can keep doing that uh, as you wish. 
All right. Next story slipped in a little uh, Princess Diaries reference there. I wonder if anyone <laughs> yes, caught that. Very nice. Um, As you wish. All right. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go watch Princess Diaries. So next one here coming from the CRM and projects integration side of things. So they have updated a handful of features inside of this integration, really centered around like two main components. So one is how client configuration is going to integrate. And then the other is allowing for some additional modules to integrate. So, you know, things outside of just like the contacts and the deals. And then they did slip in one last little update around permission management. Um, they're doing this in a lot of the integration tools. They recently did it for Zoho Books, where they're giving you more tools to manage, like who should actually be able to access that integration. Um, I like a couple of these. It does leave one more thing that I would love to see maybe in a future update. Um, but any of these kind of stick out particularly for you, Greg, before I start running my mouth? Uh, no, uh, they uh, they look fine. Uh, I, I Admittedly, uh, you know, I haven't done a lot of... Uh, Pro projects integrations recently so um this wasn't really like on my radar but uh, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts yep so i mean really like the client configuration is a funny one because really like visibility is the keyword they didn't really change a lot about it um it's really just that they're now showing it to you in those integration settings right mm -hmm. so now you'll know exactly what's going to sync over i think most people probably could infer this but um you know nothing crazy the module integration is the one where I'd really love them to take it one step further. So what they've done here is essentially link projects across multiple modules. So you can see like a related list of projects potentially in like a quote, a purchase order, an invoice, right? Basically in like most modules, right? Even inside of things like products. The one thing I would love to see here is just if, and I, this is kind of a big ask, it's not a simple thing for them to do. Um, but if there was some way that we could associate a product with a template ID in projects. Obviously, like if you're doing a piece of code, you could just put that template ID in there. But if you're mm -hmm. able to actually say like for this product, when this is sold on a sales order, make this type of project when it like auto launches or when you use the integration to create one, I would love to see that. Um, again, it can be done with code, but it would just be a little nicer to be able to map them so that people that use the manual launch would still be able to like pre-select templates and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Permissions, nothing crazy here. Really just the view, edit, create, everything you're used to for permission management, but now just applied to the integration. So I know that uh, the way the integration you know, has already been working, if you want to associate something, uh, you, you have to associate... Uh, a project to an account in order to be able to associate it to a deal, right? Because yeah, the, the way they work in there is that. Yeah. I think technically a contact, but then it rolls up to the account. Yeah. Cause you have to have a, you have to have a client user in projects correspond with something. And then that client user uh, is then attached to the project. And then you can attach a deal to a project. So I assume, is it going to be the same thing for all these, other modules that it has to get connected before. I mean, at least if you want to really have like the proper integration, it does kind of need to roll up to a client, right? Because that's really where okay. everything ends up going inside a CRM. So I'd, I'd have to assume we'll have to play with it a little bit though. Cause like hypothetically, like a product is not really client specific. That's like your product listing, right? Like the rest of these yeah. are kind of specific, I guess, other than campaigns. I mean, a, a campaign is, a top level record that has a bunch of child contacts and leads. So mm -hmm. I don't really know where a project would fit in there. I guess like everything you need to do to get ready for a trade show, right? And maybe you have a campaign in there for that trade show and you're you're launching a project for it. So it'd be interesting to see. I think the main one here that I would imagine people using the most are like these transaction records and maybe cases, yeah. right? Like a certain type of case that's like, uh oh, that's a big thing. We need a project to get that done. Um, mm -hmm. That one I would imagine is pretty useful, kind of like a ticket, right? Inside a desk. Yeah. So be cool to see. We always like more integrations and less, right? Like even if something isn't going to get used all the time, it's still nice to have that option. So next update here, kind of a quick one. This is role management for Zoho Office Integrator. Um, this is, we talked about this for the first time in a long time, uh, maybe last week or the previous. Office Integrator is basically a tool that allows you to bring in the Zoho Office suite. So like writer, sheets, show into third-party applications via like an embed or via REST API. 
Mm-hmm. All this really is now is that you now have the ability to create roles right inside of here. Um, so a super admin, an admin and a developer, um, they've got the full breakdown here on this page of exactly what each of these are going to be able to do. Admin is basically everything except for account ownership activities. And a developer just misses out on a couple of the subscription management and the creation of new API keys. So we don't see a lot of buzz around this. I don't see a ton of people using it. It's kind of cool in premise. Like if you wanted to just embed like a document management tool in some web app that you're running, you can just use this. Um, Zoho's picking up development on it again, it seems like. So uh, I wonder if there's like a big customer using it that's like, hey, you don't have roles in this. We're going to need that. (laughs) So they decided to add it. Um, have you ever touched Office Integrator in any of your builds? Nope, not the integrator. Uh, you know, obviously, I use the whole uh, suite of Office apps uh, all the yeah. time, Writer, Show, Sheets, but uh, no, never actually the the integrator. Got it. Well, yeah, I guess leave us a comment if anyone's ever used this. I, I think it's so cool in theory, um, but we've never had a time where we've needed it for a client build. Um, and I'm, I'm just curious to see if it like works well. One thing I will highlight, it looks like you can only add five users to your portal. Um, I don't know if that's like a hard limit or a soft limit or what that looks like. But um, yeah, leave us a comment below. Has anyone ever touched this thing? Uh, if so, did it work? Uh, and if it did work, did it work well? I'm curious to know. Yeah, Next I mean, I guess because they're, they're, they're just saying that, sorry, just real quick, because yeah. they're saying, yeah, it's a limit of five users, but that's not five users to the office suite of apps. It's just five users for the actual like integrator management yeah. tool right exactly so, exactly yeah, so it's not like it's not like this tool you can only have five people could use zoho writer and that's it <laughs> that, that yeah, would be, you're done no more that'd be pretty wild uh <laughs> yeah. but yeah that just would limit the, the scope tool. quite a bit that would limit yes. the scope quite a bit um yeah and i guess i guess you just can't have more than five developers i'd have to imagine that that is a limit that can be changed well you can't uh, have more next than here, you can't have more than like four developers because that was including yeah, the super, one super admin. admin. Yeah. Let's if we're assuming the super admin's a developer, maybe you got five, but uh yeah. who knows? Uh some upcoming updates for Zoho Creator. As a side note, I really like that they do this. Um a lot of Zoho apps, we don't know that an update's going to happen until it just does. And then we <laughs> get the news about it. Like I do like that they kind of let us know, like, hey, here's some things that are coming down the pipeline so that they don't surprise you when they show up in your account. Um, so a couple updates here. I think the biggest one that I saw, at least when I was looking at this, is the during actions inside of a blueprint. So blueprints really in any Zoho app are essentially a structured way to move a record through a set of steps. You have, have things like that are before. So that's like kind of the controls, who can do this or their criteria. Then you have the after, which are like, hey, we're going to create a task. We're going to send an email. We're going to trigger a function. Mm -hmm. The during are like, what fields should someone have to enter as they're moving through a transition step? And so I guess inside a creator, they didn't have a during section before, which to be honest with you, I don't know when you would use a blueprint without one, because otherwise it would just be like a workflow, right? Like of just what happens after I update a field. I guess it would add the buttons, which people might like, but. Yeah, really, the during to me is like the unique part about using a blueprint. So, well, or it's the, the before. It's also the before the like the permissions of like who can initiate the transition, right? Yeah. So the, I the could see out. that getting used a lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I really like this, especially the um the open a form. Uh, yeah. I to me that's that like... one's even bigger than the the update fields. Uh, because it's yeah. <laughs> um because it's funny talking about like uh our own internal system uh we basically have a workaround version of this with like our mm, own task do. management system we have a button that yeah. we press that w- it actually will redirect to a new form that you fill in to say that you're updating a task with like these notes and that's like a child record of the main like task record uh but uh yeah that you could now execute something probably a little bit easier uh, using uh, a blueprint system here to be able to get that kind of intermediary uh, form yeah. that could contain like that transition information. Yeah. And it's nice too, because like you could then use that form in different cases, right? It doesn't have to just be set up for the blueprint like the update fields mm-hmm. would. It's a lot more universal. So you could kind of rinse and repeat and use the same structure. Um, yeah. Looks like as well, some updates for widget configuration. Um, so 
this is pretty technical. Really, it's looking at like, I guess, the structure of the JSON file that gets created as you're deploying a creator widget. I don't know, Greg, if this is uh, English to you or if this makes little sense. Yeah. So the idea here, if, if I'm understanding it correctly, it's that it helps with um, being able to define variables that are being passed into your widget. Um, so you can provide the manifest.json file to give yes, it like so, a roadmap of what data is going to come in here. Yeah. Because basically you when you when you create a widget for any Zoho app, there's a special uh, like initial creation tool uh, that you use mm -hmm. that will kind of build like the basic file structure. And then you build your code inside of that sort of template that Zoho provides. And uh, yeah, so there's that there's already that manifest JSON file, but you can go in there and uh, you can define what variables your widget needs to use. Then when you install the widget uh, onto creator, what they're saying now is that now on like the uh, page editor inside of creator, you'll be able to click on like a configuration button on that widget panel. Good. And you'll be able to like, similar to when you create like a workflow rule or something in CRM, how you do like the, how you like define like what input variables are connected to the data. Uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, that's what it's referring to, that you'd be able to sort of define those input variables that are going in from your page. Into your Got widget. it. That is pretty slick then. Um, next one here, subform column freeze. Um, so this is essentially kind of for like larger subforms, especially if you're scrolling like left to right. What you can mm -hmm. essentially do now is identify certain columns that should be essentially frozen, meaning that when you move over to the side, if you're watching us on YouTube here, you can see the phone and single line. I don't know why they didn't give that a name um, for this, <laughs> this video example. <laughs> you can essentially now like lock those fields so that if you were to scroll sideways to fill out more information, you'll still be able to see those first parameters. That's really nice. I like that a lot. Um, uh -huh. I'd imagine people will like instantly start using that. Um, looks like as well, some updated data types for formula fields. We do a lot of things with uh, custom functions, especially because in Deluge, they can run like while someone is editing uh, when you're working inside a creator. But so looks like we've got two new field types, a single line and a multi-line, basically just based on how many characters you may need. Um, for actually setting up the plain text outputs of formula fields. Yeah, I thought this one was interesting. I was trying to think about like, when have I ever needed to have a multi-line field as the output for yeah. like a formula field? Um, but I was thinking about uh, that, say you're, if you're not like a strong uh, deluge coder uh, and you wanted to create some kind of, uh, sort of conditional uh, feel like you could you could make a formula field to basically return like a type of message to somebody uh, mm. depending on uh, or or I mean maybe even uh, maybe if you wanted to create like some kind of text snippet for somebody to be able yeah. to like copy and paste somewhere you could make a formula field that actually takes like values from previous fields in the form and kind of create like a pseudo merge tag thing and then yeah. have that export as the formula field. And then you could like go in and copy that snippet or something. Yeah. Like a paragraph style where you're like bringing One in line. various different fields with like a big old concatenation. Um, yeah. That would be the, really the only case I would think of using a multi-line, but Hey, why not? Um, and then it looks like, I think this is the last one. Uh, they're just now allowing us to set a maximum character limit inside of a field this is one of those ones that like, it seems like a boring thing that, oh, why would this be a big deal? This is really when you like take this data and want to integrate it elsewhere. So like, if you know that like, you're going to start this process in a creator app, and then at some point you're going to shoot the data over to some third party tool, and uh -huh. maybe you have a field called subject, right? Or whatever it might be. Maybe you know that in that third party tool, the character limit for subject is 150 characters. Well, if someone typed in 170 in creator, it's going to fail, right? Or you're going to have to truncate it when you write that data over. So big use case for why like they'll enable maximum limits is really so that like we can control the data before we try pushing it elsewhere. 
Um, this is a place that people get tripped up with like lead conversion and CRM is like if you have a string field or a multi-line, it'll only allow you to convert to a multi-line with the same character limit because it knows that if it tries to convert one that doesn't match, it might fail. And then that lead mm-hmm. just disappears. Um, so really, this is kind of a nice one, especially for those like integration tasks where you want to make sure like let's eliminate one place where this integration might break. Right. Which is that like the data is too long when we send it over. Yeah. Well, and the, the big one that they're, you know, mentioning here are the rich text and multi-line fields. Cause there were, you, you could already set, there were already like hard limits for things mm. like the single line fields, number fields, that kind of thing. Yeah. But the rich text and multi-lines, although I believe you could set a maximum character limit. I don't think that there was an actual like hard coded mm. limit. And now they've Got actually it. put one of they're saying 64 kilobytes, which uh, is uh, about 65,000 characters. So you're probably fine. Uh, <laughs> but, <be> enough. <laughs> but the, just tech, technically, they had no limit on it before. Uh, it. And and now they do. So I don't think it hopefully it shouldn't affect too many people. I mean, I guess it just depends if anybody was yeah, storing I mean, a whole like, a whole a novel inside of a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty big outlier. At that point, make a writer doc and put the link in a URL field. Um, Absolutely. Because any any longer than that, and really we should have some formatting and paragraphs, surely. Uh, but yeah, nice round of updates here inside of Zoho Creator. I guess some of these upcoming, some of them may have already hit. It depends on when you watch the video. Uh, on to the next one here, CRM Digest. These are things that they roll out um, kind of as a look back instead of a look forward on a monthly basis. You like that segue? Um, so a handful mm-hmm. of updates here. We covered all of these. I mean, the email enhancements for accounts and deals, um, essentially just letting you more easily select from various contacts, resolving com- uh, deployment issues when we're pushing from Sandbox. We've got lots of thoughts on Sandbox, not enough time to go through them now. Zia nodes, improved Kanbans, adding tasks to CRM calendar. One of the things, though, that we do really like about these digests is that they're not just updates that Zoho has made. They're actually including like useful discussions from the forums as well Uh as just like functions, right? So like here's someone asked a question like, hey, how would I capitalize the first letter of a word in somebody's contact information? And someone else looks like Roger just dropped some code, right? And so if you're looking to do some of these things, um, you might be able to find an easy solution here. We always recommend checking these out because, um, you know, like with most software development uh, communities, people will just give out code that they wrote for free on their forums, just like we do on the code share. People do it all the time on the Zoho uh, forums as well. So well worth taking a look at them here. Um, Because again, hey, if you can do it uh, yourself, that's cool. If you can lift it from somewhere else, even better, uh, as long as it all works. So we love these. Yep. We always like to recommend them. Well worth checking it out. Uh, if you are a CRM user, which most of you probably are. Yeah, if I had to, if I had to pick like one of these that I think everybody should read, it would be uh, there's one under the devs corner, which is best practices for handling large record sets. Uh, mm. I think is just really really good stuff there about like uh, if you're having to create any kind of automations that are dealing with you know more than 200 records at a time of how to. Uh, use Cocal queries to bulk read information and then how to use, uh, you know, the bulk update or bulk create options in, in CRM or that kind of thing. So that's uh, that, that's remember, my favorite post of all these. I remember the first time I saw your guys' solution for like how to easily manage like the bulk put, the bulk update where you guys yeah. are running the counter each time. And then once they hit the max, it clears itself and restarts. Uh, yep. Once it's done and it has less than the max, it does the final one and then it wraps up. Um, yeah, there's definitely a right way and wrong way for handling large data in Zoho. It can be a bit tricky. They have, to their credit, increased some of the response sizes and limits for these over time. Um, but yeah, well worth ch- taking a look at that. Uh, one of those things that's easy to get tripped up on when interacting with the Zoho API. Mm-hmm. Last one here, I will turn off my dark mode, uh, is a kind of side story here over from Reuters around Zoho's plan to build a $700 million uh, effort into chip making. Um, So for those who follow 
CNBC, the stock market in general, you can know that uh, creation of chips, especially for the usage of AI, is incredibly valuable. Uh, look at NVIDIA over the last couple of years. That's been the driver for the majority of their growth. Um, Sridhar always likes to invest in India. It's a big thing that he always does, whether it's helping build internet uh, into more rural areas, uh, the hub and spoke model where he's employing people outside of just the, uh, you know, the city centers. And so looks like Zoho is going to keep that moving forward and actually try to build out a chip design project um, where they will actually be manufacturing chips inside of Zoho. News on this is a little bit light. They're a bit cagey with the specific details, which is totally fine. They don't have their full plan like ready to show everybody right now. They have mentioned they're working with some third parties as well. So this won't just be Zoho doing this. Uh, They are going to bring in some kind of manufacturing experts, like obviously making a physical thing very different than making a software thing. Very, very, very different. So good call. I like that they're going to bring in some third parties just who maybe done this before. Obviously, you want to put the Zoho spin on it. But, you know, setting up a a manufacturing facility is a non-trivial exercise. So Mm -hmm. pretty cool. Be interesting to see this over time. Like, be curious to see if this is something that gets spun out as a separate brand or if they kind of keep it internal to Zoho. But only time will tell. Well, yeah, because I mean, the question is then that like, well, what are these, what are these chips going to be used for, right? Yeah, uh, you know, it's like because I know that um, they are, they are already dipping their toes into the world of manufacturing with like their POS system. Yeah, right. Which I heard that rumors. Rolled, it was like, has that rolled out year, yet? There were rumors about a phone, weren't there? Last year, there were some type of murmurs about like a phone style device. Yeah, and the POS, mm-hmm. I don't know if they started shipping the physical product. I know that they are planning on it. It'll probably start in India. Um, but yeah. they're starting to dip their toes into the, the physical realm, right? Rather mm-hmm. than just the yes. uh, software space. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see where this goes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And with that, we have actually wrapped up our news for the week. So let us jump right on into the implementation of the week. All right. Thanks, Tyler, for the great intro. Um, So here we are in our implementation of the week. This was built out um, by Colton and Bruno from the Zanata team. This is an email parser for creating accounts, contacts, and deals. So the Serum email parser used to be Uh, pretty bad. I'll just come out and say it. Uh, They did kind of a rebuild for it last year, but we don't get a lot of opportunity to really use it because in general, if we can avoid using an email parser, even a good one, we will. We'd always prefer to do things via REST API. But sometimes working with a client who works with a really large company, um, can't say the company in particular in this case, but a very, very, very large wholesaler. And this wholesaler can receive inbound prospects that they will forward over to our client to provide various additional services. Have to be very vague. Um, And so when you're working with a really big player, they might not have a REST API for you to use, right? And if they did, they might not let you use it. Um, And so they might say, hey, we're going to send you these prospects. We're only going to send you an email. That's it. Don't ask for anything else. And so in those types of cases, we have to use an email parser. So we find ourselves doing so here. But the CRM parser lately has gotten a lot better than it used to be, where now you can basically just have the parser trigger a function rather than having to try to do the like funky little field mappings and writing them everywhere. Like, let's just feed all the data that it can pull out into a function and take it from there. So what we did, the end goal for these is to have them in as an account contact and deal because they're kind of coming in pre-qualified by the time they're actually hitting our client system. But we still did want them in the lead reporting, right? So if we pull a report of how many leads have been created, we want these guys included. So what the team did, essentially set up a parser where that email is now routed. The parser can take a look at the email. And and to their credit, it's pretty form oriented, right? It's like name, name, email, email, right? It's very predictable what we're going to see on there. So we take that data, we parse it into the leads module with a particular source so that when we actually pull those reports later, we'll know how many came in from this particular marketplace. Then once that lead is created, boom, it is just converted right away into a contact account and a deal. Because as I mentioned, these are coming in very qualified. These are people who are like ready to go. Let's get a quick phone call, a quote, and then get to work. So 
when that lead is created, it is automatically converted and then it enters the deal pipeline to receive an estimate, a quote, and move forward from there. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy here. I just wanted to highlight it because Parser just used to be real funky. I did not like working with that thing. But after the last round of updates to it, it's it's now pretty solid. Where sure, we always want to avoid a parser if we can, but sometimes we can't. In the past, we kind of have to route it through like a third party parser. Like Zapier's always had a pretty good one. Uh -huh. But you don't want to have to go external for something like this if you don't have to. Right. We're now yeah. you're paying Zap your licensing fees and, and having to deal with them as well as Zoho. So much smoother to just do this all internal to CRM. Uh, so, yeah, big shout out to Colton and Bruno for uh, giving me an opportunity to talk about the improvements to the uh, parser that have happened over the last little year or so. Yeah. And you know what? I uh, Why don't we just come out and say who it was for? It was Alibaba. What can we say? We represent <laughs> Alibaba, the you know, the. You didn't, you didn't know that they run everything on Zoho CRM, but yeah, in fact they do. <laughs> this is our this is our big wholesaler. Uh huh. Yeah, let's go yeah, with that. For, for legal um, reasons, that is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, and with that, let us jump on over to our code share of the week. All right, bit of a double header here. I'll kind of tee this one up for you, Greg, but shout out to Colton for being the implementation and the code share of the mm -hmm. week. Looks like this one is around getting data from a Zoho sheet. So uh, want to take us through it, Greg? Yeah. Um, so Colton takes us through here uh, about how you can access data uh, from Zoho sheet rows uh, via API calls, uh, specifically using Deluge, of course. Uh, a lot of the times, if we are... Uh, wanting to deal with tabular data, you know, storing it somewhere, reading it from somewhere else. We usually prefer to use analytics. It's just a lot more uh, robust. It can just hold so much more information. You can create queries, all sorts of things. But uh, maybe you're not a Zoho One user, you know, or a CRM Plus user, and you don't have analytics, uh, but you can always have access to Zoho Sheet. Uh, so this is a uh, yeah, just an alternative for if you wanted to, uh, for example, uh, let's say that uh, you wanted to have like a price list uh, mm. database that maybe some of your uh, outside contractors need to have access to to update mm. with like latest values, but you don't want to give them CRM access uh, no, or you don't books access. For a license, right, to come into books and do that. Yeah. So you could have this. So you could have sort of a public Zoho sheet that your outside, your third party people could go in and update uh, or add data to, and then you would create something in the CRM or books or something to pull from uh, that table whenever you need the latest data. So, got it. Uh, yeah, it's a nice, uh, a nice slick uh, example of uh, how to because because always with the key with all these things is just knowing how is the how is the JSON set up? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the interesting thing is that... Um, <laughs> like, this is a pretty non-obvious uh, format for your criteria. Uh, like, yeah. having a sneak all these, like, splashes into it everywhere. Like, exactly. not exactly what you might expect um, if you were to take a guess at what that criteria yeah. might look like. Uh, the other really interesting thing about the uh, Zoho Sheets API is that it's... Um, so, normally, with something like... Uh, if I wanted to, with a regular REST API, if I wanted to uh, get a specific, get like records, uh, I would be doing like a get uh, and... invoke URL request, uh, or I would hit like a certain API endpoint. Oh, yeah. So she, you pretty much hit just one endpoint for anything, but you actually pass in a parameter called method where you say, uh, I'm doing a work record fetch so it's like it's just a little bit of different structure than most other api yeah. most of the rest apis um so just uh yeah little... and normally like this wouldn't be here and this here would under type would be a get right if you were going to yeah. go and pull data from something so yeah good highlight there and then it's kind of the same if you want to send data in you're basically just sending the other method or an, another method um for records dot update still using a post so yeah, yep. that would have uh, that would have stumped me if I wasn't looking mm -hmm. at the documentation. So yeah, especially in Golden, and even and even better than just providing the code of how to get it, he also provides you with code of 
how to uh, verify that it did work correctly uh, and uh, yeah. how to uh, yeah write a sort of a, a data check there uh, afterwards. Got it. Looks like you do need to do the classic thing of putting your map in a map before you can Which post it. So uh, yep. the, the classic. Um, but yeah, everyone I'm sure that watches the show knows this by now, but uh, all of these code shares, this one and many, many more are hosted over at club.zanata.com. Completely free. You do need to sign up with your email just so we know you're a real person and you're not going to spam us uh, incessantly. But you can come in here and see just a whole bunch of different code shares, general discussion, and... Look at this segue, Freddy, uh, our announcements and events. So it is one of those rare days. We do have an announcement. Where do those live here? Are they just under general discussion now? Um, because we have a call out here for the world of creator coders. Um, so, Greg, maybe you want to walk us through here what you're thinking for this uh, coding competition? Yes. So uh, big announcement time. Uh, we are hosting a, a creator coding competition. Uh, now, some of you may have already seen on Zoho uh, that there is a creator hackathon that is happening uh, this year. That is centering around uh, building poll applications, uh, you know, submitting those to, to Zoho. Registration for that, I believe, has closed. So if you missed that, but you still want to show off your creator skills... We've got one for you. This is going to be a little bit more of a, a sprint. Uh, it's uh, centered around uh, creating a, a game. Uh, if anybody here uh, played Wordle back in the day, which I thought Big absolutely time. everybody did, uh, but uh, some <laughs> one of our one of my colleagues in the company here was like, "What's Wordle? What are you talking about?" I'm like, "What do you mean you never heard of Wordle?" He's like, "I don't know. I just never heard of it." So I think he's the have... crazy one, though. I agree he's, with you. I yeah. thought everyone heard of it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we are uh, kind of a, kind of like a game jam. We're inviting people to uh, create like a game interface uh, using Zoho Creator. Uh, we are uh, doing this in preparation for Zoholics coming up here in just uh, two weeks uh, at Zoholics at that live CRM Zen show that I mentioned. Uh, Brett and I will announce the uh, winners of this competition. Uh, and uh, yeah, I head over to Zanata.com uh, or Club Z. Uh, we've got the post there explaining, you know, all the rules, how to submit, uh, timelines, that sort of thing. Basic, the thing is just uh, June 5th is the last day to submit. And to submit, all you have to do is just give us a URL for a, a public Zoe Creator page uh yeah you can see this is my example of a uh zohodl uh where i'm showing you screenshots you have to tell me what app it is trying to guess which one it is and if got you get it. it right got it in one very got nice it in one you tried to trick me and make me think it was projects but uh no, i did this is, this is inside of books um, but yeah, so calling all creator nerds, uh, jump on in on this. Uh, looks like we're going to evaluate on the UI, the innovation and creativity. Um, and then we've got a couple prizes. Oh, boy. Um, so these are a couple gift cards. So this is not a merch store. We've got a lot of fun and funky things over there, um, including shirts, T-shirts, uh, polos, pants, shoes, hats, cups, every different thing that yep. you could imagine. And and also for the for the winners, uh, if well, if there are any winners at Zoholics, uh, which there there might be, uh, then uh, you know we're gonna we'd love to be able to meet with them, give them a shout out, uh, and uh, we'll probably uh, see if we can do some uh, you know it, videos or interviews with uh, the winners so that they can uh, yeah kind of show off their their talents to the world. Awesome. Well, sweet. With that, uh, love the effort here, Greg. This is awesome and excited to see all of the submissions. Um, but before we wrap up the show, we got a couple more segments here. So let's jump on over to what's new on Zanata.com.
All right, so as we always do when we do one of these full product tutorials over on the YouTube channel, uh, we like to do a full write-up of it here on the website in case anybody doesn't want to watch the video and instead just wants to read through it. So this month we did a full tutorial on Zoho Data Prep, essentially kind of a tool that sits between some third-party data and your Zoho environment. We kind of went through in this all the different use cases for data prep, how to get your data in, how to clean it up or prepare it, and then how to punt it out to another Zoho app. In my case, I used Zoho CRM, kind of showed the target matching functionality and everything there. Um, so well worth taking a look at. Big shout out to Wayne for writing these up. It is uh, a lot of work um, because these get pretty long. Um, mm -hmm. And so check that out here over on Zanata.com under the blogs. Um, we've also got a new case study from CQ Floors. Um, so they're working with Lucas on the Zanata team. Uh, Justin Lenson is on the uh, CQ floor side. We've done a lot. This is a pretty technically detailed uh, build out. A lot of this was integration with some third party tools that are used for creating the pricing for flooring. Um, so if you can imagine, that gets very specific and very detailed when you have to do the different shapes and sizes and, and elements that might be involved in a particular piece of floor. Um, been one we've been working on for quite a while. Um, you know, Justin gave us just a huge amount of kind words and love here at the bottom. It's been a great project working together. Um, and big win for the team to kind of get all of these things configured and humming right along uh, for Justin in his CRM. <clears throat> all right. So before we wrap for today, we got two more things. So let's jump over to the tip of the week. So this one here, I always mention when I'm recording videos, leave your comments down below. If you have any video requests, leave those there as well. We don't get a ton of video requests, but we did get one. And it was someone responding to uh, a video that we made on marketing automation, kind of mm. just mentioning like, man, I wish Zoho would fix the template editor that's in campaigns and marketing automation. It's got lots of bugs and kind of weirdness to it. So Wayne put on his superhero cape, went into a campaigns account, and basically tried to force Zoho campaign to, to have each of these bugs that we oftentimes see and then showed us how to fix them. Um, so things like the broken text, sometimes text just comes in and looks funky. So he shows how to clean that up in HTML. Things like, uh, where is it? The little underlines always go away. Or if you have special mm. characters, they get all funky. Uh, padding is always a bit of a battle. Um, and some of it isn't Zoho, like sometimes it's going to look funky if someone opens it in like Outlook, right? Old Outlook always just looks bad when they open emails. But so big shout out to Wayne here for one, being able to actually recreate the bugs on demand. Uh, you can tell he spent a lot of time in this editor because he knows how to make the bugs actually happen. Um, and then showing everybody how to fix them and ideally prevent them from occurring in the future. Um, so yeah, big shout out to him for this one. Uh, I think this video is for John Heck, so he's already seen it, hopefully finding it useful. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to just uh, layout editors of any kind, whether you're Zoho or not, like I just, I go back to my my college days and working in Microsoft Word and there's a picture mm -hmm. somewhere oh, in my yeah. report and I'm like, I just, I just need to move it a quarter yep. of an inch to the left. And you do that, and suddenly it's jumped down oh, yeah. six pages. Your your table has flipped upside down. The police yep. are knocking at your door. Uh, and everything's just... now in German. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, similarly, I was just recording a video, spoiler alert for a tip, next week on uh, CRM Canvas View. Uh, very similar, trying to get those little red lines to line up. It's like, oh, nope, <laughs> over here. Okay, over here. Oh, oh all the way over here. Um, yep. Yeah, it, you're chasing your tail a little bit with those. Um, yeah, so big shout out to Wayne. Hopefully everybody finds this useful. I know I do um, because I bump into these all the time when I am working inside of Zoho campaigns. So with that, let's jump into the last section here for the week, which will be the question and answer of the week. Portals, 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 rocking everywhere. But which portal is right for you? <laughs> that I is, had to do it that, to you. I've got the freeze frame here. <laughs> that is the intro that yeah. I have for uh, this week's Azaz. Uh, this uh, is a question that uh, came from one of our users uh, or one of our uh, YouTube viewers, uh, Amore. 
Uh, Morgan had asked uh, about which portal to use between Zoho Projects and Zoho Creator. Um, and since we were, or since I was already going to be talking about uh, the portal differences between those two apps, I decided, well, why not just talk about all of them? So uh, I kind of go through uh, what the native CRM portal is like, uh, the uh, customer and vendor portals in books, uh, yeah. the Zoho Desk Help Center, uh, then of course Zoho Projects, uh, Zoho Creator, kind of the pros and cons of each, you know, talking about the different pricing models and uh, where the main limitations are, what the best use cases uh, for each of those are. Uh, and then also at the end, uh, talking about uh, actually one of our sponsors, uh, Z Portals, and how if you are somebody that is using several different Zoho apps uh, to connect with your customers, that Z Portals offers a great sort of a uh, unified system there to connect different so apps together. So, uh, yeah, I had a good time making it. Uh, hope you have a good time watching it. Yeah. And as always, over at youtube.com slash Sonata is where we have all of our content, whether it's the podcast, the webinars, the tips, the questions, the everything. They're all over here on Zanata or youtube.com slash Sonata. We make multiple pieces of content a week, generally like four or five, sometimes two in a day when we're feeling a little bit spicy. Um, <laughs> so feel free to jump on over here and take a look. I'm sure you will find something that is useful for you. Um, and with that, I think we are done for the day. Thanks again, Greg, for uh, joining for the show. Always a pleasure having you on. Add that uh, little bit of spice to my life. That's me. Oh, just. Yeah. Just, just call Save me, that for call me paprika. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as always, if you want to get touch with or get in touch with anybody over here at Zanata, uh, just head over to Zanata.com. Go to the top right and click on book a meeting. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, and uh, you can head over to Club Zanata, uh, club.zanata.com to uh, join our uh, code share forum. Check out all the latest news and events. Uh, or visit zanata.com slash training. You can take a look at our CRM and projects, desk, campaigns, team training courses to get your team trained up on Zoho apps in less than a week. Awesome. Yeah, and last but not least, as always, if you want all this news delivered to your inbox every Monday morning, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. We always appreciate when you like and subscribe here on YouTube as well, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Anybody want the peanut? Got you another. <laughs> got you another reference in there.